Welcome everybody back to Boost Motion, guys. And today we're gonna talk about it. The CNBC article says these are gonna be the top ten cars under sixteen thousand dollars that are ten years old that you can still get a pretty much best bang for its buck. I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion and reaction to this article. So guys, definitely tap in with me. And there's no intro, definitely. But also shout out to my Boost Motion family. I know you guys have already hit the like button. Thank you guys for your support. And if you're new to the Boost Motion channel, definitely watch this video. And if you like it, hopefully I'm in a like, comment, and hopefully a subscribe but anyway guys let's go let's jump into it so guys remember i'm a car enthusiast so this list isn't like performance cars these are average everyday traffic you know from point a to point b i think cnbc is pretty much out of touch with this because they're saying cars that are under sixteen thousand dollars let's be quite honest and let's be very clear interest rates are up in 2022 to go into 2023 right uh the average person doesn't make a certain amount of money to be able to afford cars a, a, a fifteen thousand dollar car loan let me use for example a $15,000 car loan could be depending on your average credit score and interest rate could be about 350 to 400 dollars maybe even more than that and that's still ex still a quite expensive car note for the average person exactly so to be sure we uh to be sure you can get what you pay for Check for excessive wear, tear beyond stated a stated number of miles. Request a vehicle history report and bring the car to a repair shop for inspection. Let's quickly put this out there. The average person is not going to go to a dealership and be like, hey, dealership, I need you to take this car to a separate private party uh, inspector to go through the car. Most dealerships are the one who recondition the cars when they get it either from auction or trade-in. Here's, a, here's where, the, where, this is where it gets bad. Some dealerships just get a trade-in and then sell it as is. They don't really touch anything unless the tires are bad because they don't want to invest too much money in the car. They just want it in. Okay, cool. And they want someone else uh, to go buy it and go out. So they could still sell a car that may need a new tire. And if the new owner doesn't realize it under that specific lemon law for that state, well, it's not really on them. And this is the kind of shady business practices that these dealerships do. So there's not a lot of oversight. A, cer a certified pre-owned vehicle, usually one coming off a lease, often includes warranty coverage, which greatly reduces the worry that comes along with buying a used car. So those certified pre-owned vehicles are usually, let's say, if you have an Infiniti or Mercedes and you bring it back and Mercedes pretty much inspected the car based on their standards and they resell it back. So you actually have a little bit of trust of, yeah, this car was inspected by this manufacturer and they're now reselling. So I feel a little bit more comfortable with it. And sometimes the dealerships either add an extended warranty on it because of these vehicles or you can choose to purchase one for maybe a low price. Buying used cars has typically been considered a smart way to save by avoiding steep depreciation costs that go in hand with new cars. However, a limited supply of new cars and trucks due to ongoing chip shortages, that stuff is nonsense now. It, the chip shortage isn't as vast as it is anymore. It's the end of 2022. A lot of this stuff is correcting. Now, used cars are one of the few categories with prices that are finally lower than they were a year ago, according to the latest inflation reading. Still, they remain 30, 33% higher than they were in a normal depreciation, which were occurring. Cool. So let's get to the list because I don't want to hold you up any longer. So the average price of a 10-year-old cars and trucks in, in the top 20 is just $12,814 with north of 100,000 miles or more remaining. Don't be afraid of a 100,000 mile uh, mileage marker on the odometer. 100,000 is not the mileage threshold to be used vehicles durability has has definitely improved over the last decade and i do want to be fair here i do agree with this a lot of manufacturers in the mid 20 teens or whatever definitely started designing cars with better components that last a lot longer and i'm quite surprised even as i'm 35 years old when i was 18 looking to buy a car in like 2006 the cars are trash the car could be a 2000 car and in 2006, it's already trash, it's already filthy, and you want to throw it away. And I mean filthy as in the sense that it's not reliable. But because of modern technology, because of just more electronics in the car, these cars run a lot better, and the diagnosis is a lot better. So this is, the, this is their list. In number one spot is a 10-year-old Chevy Impala. Costs about 9700 with an average remaining lifespan of about 120,000 miles. These 10 miles have the greatest potential lifespan. Camry Hybrid, average price about 14 k 100 and something thousand miles. Um, 
And it says the, the total potential lifespan is about 231,000 miles. To be honest, the car might go even longer than that. They're just saying that just to say that. If you keep on top of the ba- uh, maintenance, these cars can last for quite a long time before there's a major crisis such as transmission or even engine. I would say hybrids will probably be not as good because if there's a battery pack, you're going to have to replace that battery pack. And battery packs usually aren't that cheap to actually replace. They said Dodge Grand Caravan. I'm not going to lie to you, too. Once again, they're not even including the years necessarily, but they're saying 10 year old. So we're in 2022. I'm assuming they mean 2012 and up, right? Dodge Grand Caravans. I'm not going to lie to you. I see so much Dodge Grand Caravans. And I'm even seeing the ones from like the late 90s still knocking around. I'm like, why are these cars still on the road? But people still use them. They still use them to deliver for like Amazon or or regular um, Instacart. Like people still use these cars, even though they may not be as reliable. I guess because they're easy to work on and every mechanic knows the pretty much the common issues. They still keep running. Ford Fusion. I'm not a fan of Ford Fusion because more that's a more of a fleet car. That's car has been used in, of course, you know, police, law enforcement, FD, and why all that type of stuff. Honda Accord, definitely. Honda Accord should definitely be on this list uh, at 13,000, 114,000 miles average, and it could last over 200,000 miles. Mind you, this whole list, I'm not even going to say no more, this whole list is cars that can last over 200,000 miles if you purchase it. Honda Fit, woof. You, I'm not lying. Honda Fits is definitely another car. That's a commuter car. Once again, very low on fuel, um, uh, fuel, um, uh, fuel consumption, and the amount of money you spend. As long as you get one and you take care of it, you'll get a lot of miles. Toyota Avalon, Kia Sedona. I'm not too familiar with Kia Sedona, guys. Um, I don't really know the history of those cars. Kia never used to be such a reliable car, especially in in 2012s. 2013s, maybe the newer ones, maybe after like 2016 and 2017 and up. I'm assuming they're talking about those cars, but 2012 Kias wasn't all the best, so I'm still on the fence with that. Honda Civic Coupes, definitely. Toyota Prius, oh my God, those cars continue to be used on the on the road at the on the current day. And lastly, Chevy Impalas. I don't understand how Chevy Impala is on this list. It must be so much used by everyone that everyone knows so much of the common problems with those cars that they can still get more mileage out of it. And I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked. Maybe because it's been tested and used by so much different companies uh, as a fleet car that they just they just know how to keep these cars running. There's enough amount of basis to always try to make these cars better every year. And that's what I'm assuming uh, what they're talking about now they said they usually they also include a, a price here that says price per remaining a thousand miles that price per per ma- remaining thousand miles necessarily means how much you're going to spend on average just to go another thousand miles in maintenance this could be tires this could be spark plugs this could be anything where you may need to fix the car this may even include if you had to replace the motor transmission but once again i don't really know what they're looking into because this is just some editor from cnbc that says this but there must be a certain list that is included into this list that lets you know it's very important because i don't want you guys to go out and get let's say a chevy impala and be like yeah it's only gonna cost me about 87 dollars for every thousand miles but then you drive the car and you haven't had any issues for the next 15 20 thousand miles and then boom the motor goes and then you have to buy the motor for fifteen hundred dollars so they're probably dividing that fifteen hundred dollar repair amongst those certain amount of thousand miles you know so once again i don't know what they really include with this um all in all um there's nothing else i really want to include in this in this um information but in my honest opinion guys bear with me i want to give you my um to close out um in my honest opinion do your do own due diligence don't really just pay attention to some of these articles and think all right cool let me just go take these guys word for it um look and through forums look through facebook groups um look through um better uh, better business bureau look at nitsa like for any recalls for these cars look for the going price look for the mileage like there's so much information out there so you can see um 
how good specific cars are and don't just look at the car itself look at the motor sometimes these motors that are in these specific cars are used in other vehicles too for the same brand so like a honda accord might use this might use the same motor that's in the honda fit the, the usually the smaller or uh, trim level honda Accord might be might be used so it may be that motor is real reliable so you're like oh my god this honda Accord is super reliable but you buy the fee six version and they're like no that necessarily went with the with the four cylinder version for the honda Accord that's also in the fit so you guys understand there's a blend with that too because some of these cars may be dope but they may have different power plants and some power plants are a bit more reliable than others you gotta look into that too um, so all in all, um, just wanted to just go through this article. It would be I've been told that Boost I should make like a top five or ten list of like the cheapest like tuner cars or the cheapest exotic cars or cars that I take in my personal opinion will be dope cars for you guys to get that may not break the bank. And I've been really thinking about it. So if you definitely like that, definitely hit the comment button down below and say, hey, Boost, definitely look into doing that. Also, hopefully I earned, earned that like button. And I really appreciate you guys for your support. So outside of that, guys, you already know what to do. There is no outro. I'm still learning this new software. So outside of that, I appreciate you can add me at Boost Emotion IG. Facebook also, you can email me at Boost Emotion at gmail.com. Otherwise than that, I appreciate it. You guys have a good day. Thank you.